reading from verse 1 to 5. Psalm 27, reading from verse 1 to 5. And it reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may arise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he would hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set my, he, sh he shall set me high upon a rock. All right. Almighty Father, we give you thanks today for the place of worship that we can come again, O oh God, and to just to see each other, to hear the songs of Zion, to hear what people have to say about you, to sing the songs and just to rejoice in you. But Father, the best thing is to come to meet with you. And it's good that we have other persons that we can come with and to come before the King of Kings. So Father, as we are here today, we pray that you would really minister through your word. We pray, oh God, that we would be encouraged, that we'd be strengthened, that we would leave here better than how we came. Because the word says that the entrance of your word, it brings light. And we know, Father, that whenever we hear your songs of Zion as well, Lord, that we feel encouraged as well. So, Father, thank you for this time. And may you have the glory and the honor. And may we have the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Have your seats, people. question is, who is the Lord to you? Who is the Lord to you? Notice I didn't say who is the Lord to us or who is the Lord to me. I'm asking the question, who is the Lord to you? So it means that it is a personal thing that we have to look at this morning. It's a personal thing. Now, we are going through maybe one of the hardest times in our lives through this pandemic. Um, hearing the news that comes on the radio on a daily basis, if you're not careful, it can frighten you. If you're not careful, you can live in fear. If you're not careful, you can just shut yourself in your house and send somebody to buy some things for you. Because you could be maybe afraid. No, I can understand that because we are different and we take things differently. And sometimes, too, based on how the news is presented, it, you know what I mean? It can take a different, um, have a different effect on you. But in these times, what we need, though, in spite of what we are hearing, in spite of what we are seeing, is a good understanding of who God is. That's what we need to know. Because the reality is that a man has to live not only what he is thinking in himself, a man has to live outside of himself, meaning he has to look and see what God is saying to him. Because situations are bigger than us, they're never bigger than God, but I, I really wonder how on earth people that don't know God make it. And I know we have substitutes, we have the bar that you can go to, maybe a spliff that you can light up. Maybe something that you can have that to help you to get through these times. But for the church of God, for the people of God worldwide, we have to understand who God is. That gives you confidence when things are difficult. Listen to David. David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So this is a statement of faith. This is the brother believing God is these things for me. I don't know about the other person, about the other believer. God is these things for me now. You have to understand that the Christian faith is a personal faith. Just as your fingerprint 
identifies you and you alone. You may have another person that may be close to your fingerprint, but your fingerprint is unique to you. When we are going through stuff, we have to understand who God is and know God for yourself, personally. This is not a collective thing, you know. I'm glad when we come together as a group of people that we can worship God together, but I'm saying there are, there's a time when we dismiss and you go back home. Who is God to you then? God cannot be a God that is good to you only when you're in this church singing songs. When belly touches you, when situation comes, they come personally, you know. And even if they come as, a, as, as like for a big group of people, we still have to go through these things as individuals. I heard T.D.J. say something years ago, and I believe him. He says, when you are going through, nobody is going through but you. People can come and hold your hands. They can come and give you drink and give you rice tea and give you all the things that you like. But the reality is you're going through this. We can be helped by somebody coming alongside us, and that is great. But I'm saying when we are going through, we are going through by ourselves. That, if that is the case, it means then that we must have a personal relationship with God for ourselves. And I said to you a couple of weeks ago, whether you encourage me or not, it's not an issue for me. David said to his spirit and to his soul, he says, why are you cast down? He spoke to himself. So we have to be able to speak to yourself. We have to be able to speak to ourselves. Even if we get sick, we should be able to lay hands on our own head, on our own situation, and say, listen, look, I rebuke you or I speak healing over you. It is not that somebody has to come and pray for you. You following me? God has to be a personal thing for us. So David says, the Lord is my light, and he is my salvation. He says, the Lord is my light, my salvation, and he says, the Lord is the strength of my life. Again, David, is, David know this for himself. So the question I want to ask again, who is the Lord to you? That's the question. Who is the Lord to you? You have to answer that question for yourself. So he says, the Lord is my light. Psalms 18 and verse 28, it says, for you will light my path. It doesn't say that. It says, for you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Now, the, the, the psalmist again calls God his God. He will enlighten my darkness. When you are going through things, do you record do you have pencil and pen? Do you store things that God has done for you? Or do you store it on your hard drive upstairs? Do, do you put it in your memory. But if it's stored there, that's good because the, the, the psalmist says that the word he has hid in his heart. And, 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 and even Solomon says, let not mercy and truth for, uh, for sake you. He says, write it upon, write it upon your neck. Right upon the tip of your heart. So, everything in your heart, great. But I'm saying, when you are going through things, it's good to journal or it's good to memorize that God has done this thing for you. You know why? When you leave there and you go on to something else, what happens is you can reflect and say, I was in a dark place, but God was my light. David is saying this, you know. David is not in a hotel, no, no. David is in a bad place. But David is saying that the Lord is my light. So, for you will light my lamp, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Psalms 84 verse 11 says, the Lord God is a sun and a shield. So, God is the one that sparks light in my darkness. And about the fact, if you are moving with God, even if your circumstance is dark, your path is not supposed to be dark. And why? Because the Bible declares that God is light. So if you're walking with God, your pathway is illuminated at all times. The word of God is also light. So when you are walking with God, you have a clear place to see. So I'm saying, even if you're confused, it should be for a little bit, a little while. And sometimes we get confused when we turn our eyes inside too. When we turn our eyes in the situation or on the situation, we get confused that way. We magnify the situation and not magnify the Lord. Some says, oh, magnify the Lord with me, but we change it and we magnify the situation and it gets bigger. And then instead of having light now, 
there's darkness. So the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Protection and light. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 19 to 20 says, The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you. But the Lord will be to you an everlasting light, and your God your glory. Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and the days of your morning shall be ended. This is God being my everlasting light. This is God being the one that looks out for me. This is the one that sheds light on my circumstances. So, all the days of my life, I have God's light. God dwells, the Bible tells us, in unapproachable light. Serious. So, there's never darkness for God. And I believe that wherever God's presence is, there is light. All the times you see angels appearing onto people, um, even in the time of the birth of Christ, it talks about the, the, the angels um, um, appearing and a, a great light shone around people. Wherever God comes, it's light. You still here? So, Micah chapter 7, verse 8 says, Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will, ar I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. The Lord will be what? A light to me. So again, we have to understand that God is not taking away bad circumstances out of life all the time. What he does is that he comes and he changes you and changes your situation by bringing his presence, by bringing his light to you. And sometimes I know that uh, as Christians, we want to pray and have everything to be back to normal and things. But I'll tell you something. Why do you think that God allowed David to go through this situation that he went through? If he didn't go through this situation, there'd be nothing for us to read, nothing for us to, to meditate on. We wouldn't have any, any, any testimony about God. And I'm saying that is another thing that we are, 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 are lacking with sometimes because sometimes we, we are blessed by God and the only body that knows that we are blessed by God is You want God, nobody else. Don't share. David is writing a, a, a song here, and the brother is saying, all of these things happen to me. But what I love about this too is not, it's not only David. We see Isaiah is saying this. We see that Micah is also saying this. So other persons recognize that God is light. So it's not an individual thing. Other persons come to realize that God is light. David says, not only God is light, David says, God is my light. Is God your light today? Can you say that? Or is this David's testimony? Because sometimes, you know what happens is, sometimes we walk around with other people's testimonies in our, in our pockets. And when we are asked to give a testimony, we raise up and we give somebody testimony. That's not yours. You have to have your own testimony. Don't tell me that you don't have anything to give God thanks for. And don't tell me you have nothing that God has not brought you through. Or it's bringing you through. And if that is the case, then you have something that you can say, the Lord is my light. Again, not your light. He says my light. We still here? He asks the question. He says, the Lord is my light and he's also my salvation. He says, whom shall I fear? So he's not only my light, he's also my salvation. This is a very good thing. You know, salvation basically means deliverance. It means safety and it means victory. It means salvation means deliverance. It means safety and it means victory. People, we still here? All right. Do you think that a mask on your face can stop you from getting a virus? This virus? Do you think that sanitizing your hands can stop you from getting this virus? Do you, think, do you think that the vaccination can stop you from getting this virus? 
Now, I want us to see something here, people. The Bible says that people trust in chariots and horses. But we will trust in the name of the Lord. We have to be careful not to put confidence in things. Because I can tell you something. You can wear your mask. You can be vaccinated. You can sanitize your mask. And if God is not the person that is taking care of you, you are not covered. But, but the reality is, if you are not covered by God, then you are not covered. Pastor is not telling you not to wear your mask. Don't get confused with me. Pastor is not telling you not to sanitize your hands. And if you feel again vaccinated, that's your choice. I'm not telling you don't do these things. I'm telling you that safety is not in these things. Safety is in the Lord. David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. God is my victory. God is my safety. God is my shield. So where are you putting your confidence? That's the point. Because we ask the question, who is the Lord to, to me or who is Lord to you? God is my light and my salvation. God is my safety. God is my victory. I feel safe and secure in him. Even though things around me may not be safe and secure, I have to I believe in my head, Wendell, God have me covered. God has me covered. Boy, it is vain to trust in horses. And that's what people did. People went down to Egypt to get better chariots and better horses because they feel if you get better chariots and better horses, you will be safe. No, sir. You still here? So the Lord is my salvation, so he's my victory, right? Cool. So it said the Lord is also the strength of my life. It means that God is the place of safety. God is my protection, God is my fortress, God is my defense, God is my helmet, God is my refuge, and God is my stronghold. Remember back in the days they had this place called City of Refuge? In the, in the Old Testament, you can run to this, these, 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 these places. And if you go to these places, you're good. The song says, or the, 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 um, the Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and we run into it and we are saved. So the Lord is the strength of my life means that God is a place of safety. So God himself is my safety. That's why we come here you know, at the church because we don't want to ever come to the place where we believe that things that we have keep us safe. Listen to me, you got burglar bars and you got, and you got these things in your house. Um, security, uh, cameras, and men still are in your house and they're not eating your food. You still come home and find your whole house clean. So we don't trust in human things. We trust in God. Not telling you again not to get your burglar bars. Not telling you again not to get your stuff. I'm saying to you that God is our safety. The Lord is the strength of my life, which means that he is my protection, my fortress, my defense, my helmet, my refuge, my stronghold. We were coming up in, in church. We were singing this song, Jesus be a fence all around me every day. Lord, I want you to protect me as I journey on my way. Lord, I know you can. Lord, I know you will fight my battles if I just keep still. Jesus be a fence all around me every day. You got to bring my name over tunes, you know. That's word. That's word. That is really what it is. So the Lord is the strength of my life. You understand what I'm trying to tell you now? That, that, that in God you are covered. In God you are safe. The Amplified Bible says, The Lord is, is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear or dread? The Lord is the refuge or the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So it says here, When the wicked came against me, to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Why? Because God is your what? Defense. God is the one who is, the, listen, God is not telling you, I'll tell you your enemies don't come, but tell them come. I'm not going to show what I do to you when you come against my people. David is saying, I will not fear because I have God as what? My refuge, my stronghold. So if you are in a place where you know for instance, let me, let me get another illustration. I don't want to take too long today. Lord, help me today, please. 
Then you have what people call the hurricane season. Churches and schools are places of like a stronghold. It's like a fortress. That's where you leave from, go to it. Where you leave from, go to it because you believe it is a safe place better than what you have at home. I don't know if that's always the case. But you leave home thinking that this place is a place of safety. That's where you go there. So if you are in, a, in, in, in something and you feel safe in it, you are not fearful because you feel safe. When you do not feel safe is when you get fearful. When they had Elsa, Elsa Pass here recently, someone said to me, but Randell, I had a frightened one. I had a frightened I, I was really frightened. And he said to me, you don't have to be frightened because you were being blocked in, meaning that there's something behind me. But he had the full blunt of the, the wind. He said he got frightened. And he left his house with his family and went by another person. Again, he was thinking that what he had was not good enough. Uh, where he was going was better. Now, if you are thinking in your head that God that I cannot see is my hurricane shelter. It's the one who defends me. When things come against you, you don't, you know, it, your heart and your chest don't really be beating so hard. Let me make another is illustration. One time I like some grass. That's not true. I like some I like, I, like, I, like some, I, like, I like some rubbish I want to burn. I didn't realize that this thing was under the grass. This thing is spreading, but you can't see it. And then when I realized now, the fire all done by Sister Burroughs. Andrea, talking about heart beating. Now listen to me. It's like the cartoons. I can see my heart don't swell up. Right? I mean beating, and I mean your heart, your heart beat, your pulse. Under normal circumstances, you do not feel your heart rate or your pulse when you are like this. You feel it after you run and you stop. But how is it that you are not running? But all of a sudden, so you feel this heart. You're frightened of what happened to you. And you had to call the fire truck and get and, and to deal with that. Now that was a case where that one was beyond me. Another illustration, Lord help me today. Another friend of mine was burning some stuff too, and he, his, fi his fire as well got away, but he did the right thing by calling the fire service first before he started. So he called them, but then he called them back and told them that don't worry, he has it under control. But it got, it got away from him. And he said the men came right by his house and parked the truck. And the fire is going along and he is frightened too. He is frightened about the fire going somewhere far. And the men come and the truck walk around by the fire. Look at it, up and down. And the, the man said, the fellas saying, the fellas, no water, we can beat this one. And they get a piece of board and beat it and beat it and beat it and the fire out. But the man that doesn't have a clue what to do, frightened. What I'm saying to you is that when you know that God has you covered, the brother was frightened because he didn't have the skills. This man company seen now, and the men are frightened. Men fight fires every day. The men know that this, this, this is a waste of water. We can beat this one. And the man saying, what well, these men not move faster? What well, do men not do this thing quick? What is it going further? The men walking around cool, cool, cool. And about three men come and beat this thing and fire out. What I'm saying is, once you know that God has you covered, you can sleep and sleep well. There are many times people don't sleep because they're handling the situation themselves and not recognizing that he that keeps Israel will never slumber or sleep. So give it to the man that can't sleep. And you take a rest. We still here? So, so when the enemies came against me to eat my flesh, my enemies and foes, and foes, they stumbled and fell. Listen to the brother. He says, though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. This sound normal? Though an army may encamp against me, 
my heart shall not fear. Though war may arise against me, in this I will be confident. All I'm saying here and all the brother is saying here is that when you know God to be your light and your salvation and your strong power, you don't have to worry when enemies come against you. You know why? God has proven years ago that when your enemies come against you, just like Pharaoh, you name them, all through the ages, people that came against the people of God, God fought for them. And they were covered by God. So the brother is saying, in God, it's my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. So why is it then that we become fearful when we go through situations as if it is the end? I heard about two persons who have cancer. And it's not good news to hear. And it's a Lord of mercy. We believe that God can change and turn around any situation. You know, the truth of what it is that even though I may not have the ability to do something, doesn't mean that God doesn't have it. And there's some things we have to confess that are beyond us. But when you have confidence that the person that you have your trust in can do it for you, then you will really relax in God and not be flustered. So Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song. He has also become my salvation. Behold, God is what? My salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. If you have the King James Version, you'll see the word Jehovah. Or Jah. For Yah the Lord is my strength and song. He has also become my salvation. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Still here? Psalms 3 and verse 6 says, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me wrong about or against me all around. David is in a strong tower as well running from Saul. And David is saying the same thing. For thou art Lord are the shield for me. My glory on the one who lifts my head because David is saying I am being hunted like an animal but at the same time I go on sleep. The way I go on sleep because God have me covered. Or God has me covered. So I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people. Because David is saying that God is my light. God is my salvation. God is my deliverer. God is my stronghold. If you are hiding in God, you are in a good place. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. The brother is saying, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to, to, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in a time of what trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. Now the truth is a sanctuary is supposed to be a safe place too, you know. Safe place. So the psalmist says, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. We understand that God dwells on the individual now, but there's something about coming together in one place. But the brother is saying, I have a desire. I want to dwell in God's house. For in a time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He will set me Upon the high rock. People, watch this one. Now you can shut down, right? Right now. Psalms 31 and verse 20 says, You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence. See that one? From the plots of man. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. You shall hide them in the secret place of what? Your presence. So when you abide in God's presence, you're abiding under God's shadow. The reason why when a cloud comes over you, there's a shadow, is because the cloud is right above you. If you are in God's presence, you're abiding under the shadow and the shelter of the Almighty. 
So hide them in the secret place of your presence from the plots of men. You shall keep them secretly in the pavilion from the strife of tongues. So again, people can say what they like, believe in God. People can do what they like, believe in God. We don't fear people when we have the king of kings on our side and the one who protects us from everything that will come against us. We are hiding in God's presence. Wow. So Psalms 91 verse 1 and 2 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. He says, he who dwells in the secret place. All I'm saying, stay in God's presence. Stay in God's presence. And if something happens to you in God's presence, God is going to deal with the situation, right? You're not out of God's will enough. Job's friends thought that because Job has some situations that he was sinning and he was out of God's presence. They said to Job, Job, you talking real fancy. I want you to understand that the reason why you're going through, what you're going through is because you're looking at wicked Job. Confess it. People believe because you're going through stuff that's going to go around you, you, you pull some stunt or you are backsliding or something. Let me tell you something. What about the Jesus? The Bible, the, the Bible not only called him a friend of sinners, the Bible says you have, the people say you have a demon. You are a Samaritan and you got a demon. Because you're not. Can you imagine people saying that Christ has a demon and he's also casting out demons but the prince of demons? I like Jesus enough. Jesus is, is a nice man. Jesus knows how to pass through people. Jesus, and Jesus wasn't like in the fridge, you know. Jesus don't kick people in his, in his head. I better think about he. Man, move on. Some of you like fridge and deep freeze. And everything that people say, we take on and take in. Put it upon us. May it upon it forever, ever. Amen. Christ knew how to pass through people. Christ knew how to Take licks and still function. Why? God has him covered. We still here? You know how many plots people already set for you that you escape? Hmm? But listen to me. They say sticks and stone can break your bones, right? Words can never harm me. I don't know about that. But I'll tell you the truth. The words that people spoke that I didn't even hear. God already got in trap already. Because according to the word, it says, you shall keep them secretly in the pavilion from the strife of tongues. People's lips. If I sit down and talk, listen to people talk, I will say about you, I tell you, you get weak. And do the legend and say, Lord, call me home. I praise God, Crystal. I have something on my keyboard called delete. I find it fast. Delete. And I'm learning how to get rid of people that for around me that ain't, ain't, ain't helping me either. I'm learning. It wasn't hard. It wasn't hard lessons that I have to learn because everybody can't help you. Some people come along to this, give you burdens. Christ already tell me that every day has his own situations and trouble. I want no more. I want no more. So again, situations will come, people. But God has you covered. That's the point I want to make. Keep on dwelling in God's presence. The Bible says that the better call Cain went out from God's presence. How can you do that? When since God is everywhere. You cannot live in God's presence without your choice. Not that God doesn't know where you are. Because God is omnipresent. But you can decide not to live according to God's way and to bite on the shadow of the Almighty. I want to, look, for instance, then, God is my umbrella in the rain. God is my umbrella in the sun. The Bible says a shade from the heat. So God is these things for us. So I'm saying, even though we have man-made things that protect you from the heat, I'm telling you that God is the true one. You understand? Because we're just mimicking things that God has done already. So people, who is the Lord to you? That's the question. You have to know God for you. It's personal, people. 
It's personal. And I know God for myself, and nobody can tell me that Jesus is not real. I don't care who you are and where you come from. You know how many times God helped me from help me already? True. You know how many times I sit down and pray, Lord, I don't want this to happen to me, and it didn't happen. You know how many times things, you know, how, you know, listen to me, is numerous. I can't mention them. Because let me tell you something, man. God has been good to me. And I know God for when I reach. I don't care what kind of fancy thought you bring to me. I know God. The brother David is saying, the Lord is my light, my salvation. And if you don't know God that way, you can't say that about him. You can say God is light and God is salvation. You may not say my. One man told me, and I'm finished. They said that Jesus come to tear away the sins of the world and the world still full of sins. But he's not your savior at this point. Jesus is savior and he's Lord. Amen. Is he your Lord though? Is he your savior? That's the point. You cannot say that he's not savior because you are not his. The one that he saved. You can't change the fact. The fact is that Christ is the savior of the world. This is another fact. Mia Montley right now is the prime minister of Barbados. Whether you want her to be or not, that's a fact. You will not like her, doesn't change the fact that she's prime minister. Jesus is Lord and master, even if he's not of you. But what I'm saying is, it's good when he is acknowledged as Lord and master. And brother called Saul or Paul, when he was struck down on the way to Damascus, he asked the question, who are you, Lord? And he asked him, Lord, what will you have me to do? He recognized that this is God. This was the one that he was persecuting all the time. Jesus said, brother man, you are persecuting me. But he still have it. And he just said, Lord, who are you, Lord? And then he submitted to the lordship of this person and became one of the best apostles. I want to finish this thing today. I can finish now. Paul, Sophie, is... The man that came last and did more work than the 12 men that Jesus selected. Is that true? It's reality. Christ chose 12 men to walk with him. Paul wasn't even brought there. Paul persecuted the church. But when the man came in, the man said he labored more than all of them. Paul was a, listen, the best example for me of what a Christian looks like that is sold out. I can't find nobody else but Paul. Paul's a crazy fellow. Paul was a man that the men told Paul about the man, the man that is wearing this mantle, they're going to take him to Jerusalem, they're going to kill him. And Paul said, listen to me, man, don't make me cry, man. I not only went to go up there, but I went to die for him too. So the man decided, look, I'm going to serve God and nobody is not going to stop me. The man had a a zeal that would not cut out. Plot some men, oh Lord of mercy, they had a lawyer fall down in a basket to escape the Jews. Paul was beaten so many times, shipwrecked so many times. Paul was in so much trouble, but Paul says that God delivers you and does deliver me. Paul. Then we have some preachers who can come and tell you, when you become a Christian, life get easy and things don't happen to you like anybody else. Who tell you, what kind of madness we be talking about? When you have men that were more anointed than we are, I don't know, I, I don't know, I don't know if that's true anyhow. We take that back. You have men who labored far more and had greater signs than we did or than we do. And the men had troubles and persecutions and hardships. So you want to go up, walk with the same spirit and live like you're on the ABC highway and don't know the back roads, no, no bumpy roads. I don't know that Christianity. The fact is, the brother is writing here from a bad place. He's not in a good place. He's under hardship. Enemies running him down. But the man is still saying, God is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Lord, the strength of my life. Of whom again? You can only say this if you know the man that you're serving. Know the God that you're serving. Paul knew him. Jesus knew him. All the other men, like Elijah, these men knew him. Now, in this time that we have here, that is so difficult that we're in, you 
better know God, I tell you something, otherwise this situation can be difficult for you. Because we turn on the news every day, X amount of persons going down to Harrison Point, X of persons going into this place, more persons dying from this thing, and you say, oh Lord, are you next one coming on, Lord? No, you're not. I don't think about that. I can live and not die. For real. That's what I believe. And according to the same Psalms 91, it says that Allah had done fall upon your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. I believe in that when the weeks, even if this thing come around me, you can't kill me. I believe in that. And I, I, I stand firm on that, you know what I mean? I'm not walking the place, tipping, towing, and this time, and, and, and be faithful. I'm living in the fear, the judge that live by faith. And the faith is, God is refuge, and strength, and very present help in time of trouble. And even now, he's my light and my salvation. Amen. Father, today we thank you and bless you, Lord, for who you are to us. Father, I pray today that we would trust in you, for our confidence in you. The Bible tells us that vain is, you know what I mean, the, the confidence in man, to put confidence in man. The arm of flesh as well will fail us, Lord. And we know that when we have you on our side, that we will be victorious. Father, again, I want to pray for all of us who are here today and all the families who are represented, everybody that come to this congregation, Lord, and we know persons all through greens. Lord, I want to pray today that you will be our protection, our banner. Father, you will be our job, our raffle, Lord, our healer. Father, the things that we may pick up, oh God, but you can dissolve them. And Father, we hear your word saying that the weapons that form against us shall not prosper. So we give you thanks today, oh God, that even as this virus is all around the world, causing layoffs and job this and job that and confusion, even against the house of God who vaccinated and who not vaccinated and people having these issues and all. Father, a, a whole lot of nonsense is here. A lot of confusion is all around. Father, I pray that you would just step into this situation in a real way, Father. And I pray that you would dispel the darkness, Lord, and the devil's schemes to come to cause confusion and come to cause people not to trust you, Lord, and to blame other people and to look at other people as enemies to their health and that kind of stuff. Father, I pray today that people will look to you more than ever before. Because I believe, Lord, if you didn't know God before, this is a very good time to know who he is. Because, Lord, you are necessary. We have lived life without you for so many years. And we are thinking that we have the answer. Lord, we don't have the answer. Even heard recently that the, the Pfizer vaccine from CNN only has about five months potency. It wanes after five months, they say, you have to get some booster. And Father, we think that we know what the answer is. Father, you are the answer for real. And we beg you up and we exalt you as king and lord and master. Father, Joseph was down in a place called Egypt. Had a famine for seven years, oh Lord. Seven years. People would have lost their houses and their lands because they came to Joseph and they had to give money to Joseph to get grain. And after they didn't have any money, they became slaves. After they didn't have no more money, they sell their lands and their homes and whatever. They, they went to a stage that is similar to now. But Father, you preserve Israel. You preserve the house of Israel. You preserve them down in that land called Goshen. We give you honor today and thanks in Jesus' name. I pray that the blood of Christ will cover us and protect us. That we, O oh Father, will not walk around foolish, as the Bible says, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Father, I pray that you put a banner right over us. A shield of protection, O oh God. I hear even the devil saying to, 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 to you, do you ser the job serve you for nothing? You have a hedge around him, but remove that hedge. And you will see that he will curse you to your face. And Father, you remove the hedge, but you still cause his life to be prolonged. And Father, it tells me that there is protection when we are in you. Because the devil recognized, I want to get at this man, and I can't get at this man because God has been man protected. 
And Father, even now, Lord, I pray that the house of God, the people of God would shift their minds from the news and the world and to see that God has them protected. God has you protected as well. The same way. You are covered by the blood of Christ. And a matter of fact, the Bible says, it declares that God or Christ is our Passover. That blood is sprinkled. And no disease and no sickness will come into our tents that we dwell in. So, Father, every household and every village, Lord, I pray that the, 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 the Passover blood will be placed and sprinkled. And sprinkled on even by faith now over all of us that we, oh God, will be covered from this thing that is coming past, passing through the land. There has to be a difference between us, though, Lord. The devil said it for truth. We ain't serving you for nothing. We, we serve you, Lord, because you are good. And we know that in you, we are secure. We have our eternal security in you. Nobody, according to Jesus, is able to pluck us out of your arms. According to the word of God, underneath us are the everlasting arms. Father, we are moving in shelter. When we go out, we are sheltered. When we come back home, we are sheltered. Father, shelter is always there perpetually. So, Father, we thank you this morning that we are covered by you. That we don't forget this, Lord. We don't forget this and understand that we are covered by you. We will not fear what man can do and what this disease can do. Because, Lord, you are well able to deliver us. And you are delivering us as well. So, Father, have your way in and through our lives. Keep us safe in your pavilion. We hear somebody saying, keep us safe to the storm pass by. But Father, we pray in Jesus and not until the storm pass by. We are in your pavilion forever. And Lord, we go on your word. And other persons may not believe what it says, but Father, we believe what it says. And we are standing upon the power of your word, that we are safe in your pavilion. So Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. May we live here different. And may we, oh God, remember that the God of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. So we give you honor today in Jesus' name. Amen.